You think you know Mac? I bet you're missing at least three of these tips that I'm gonna share with you today. My name is Dan and this is my channel. I love making everyday technology easy. I worked that out for 19 years and now I'm in full-time ministry. I wanna show the Mac some love and I'm gonna show you my top seven tips that I use on a daily basis that makes me more productive. Let's kick it off with tip number one. So tip number one is an oldie but a goodie screenshots. That's right. I know what you're thinking, Dan. Welcome to 2001. And, and you would not be wrong, but so many people still don't know about screenshots. So let me change my, my camera here really quick. A screenshot is, is exactly what it sounds like. You're able to take a picture of your screen. What is the command? Very simple. Three, three keys on your keyboard. Shift command and the number four. You're gonna hold down shift, you're gonna hold down command, and then you're gonna tap on command uh, number four, and your mouse is going to turn into a crosshair. And whatever you click and drag and highlight and let go of, it's going to take a picture of. So I'm gonna drag and you'll see that I, kind of hard to see on this background, but you can see that I just took a picture of my desktop. Now that is what most people know, but most people don't know that you can do the same command, shift, command, but now the number five, and you are going to get a menu bar at the bottom of your Mac that's going to enable you to do different things. For example, you can capture the entire screen, menu bar, like everything. You can also select a specific window. Maybe you are multitasking, you have your Safari browser up and you have a numbers spreadsheet up as well and maybe a notes. You can actually tell uh, screenshots which window to record or take a picture of. You can do what I just did previously where you can kind of drag a specific section, but did you know you can also record video? Very powerful. As a matter of fact, you have a couple of more options. You can choose where you want your screenshot to be saved, whether desktop or documents, clipboard, inserted right into mail or messages. You can have a countdown timer, five seconds or 10 seconds, right? Especially if you're gonna do a video, you wanna maybe get your windows organized, start that timer and then start recording. You can choose which microphone, very important, which microphone you're going to be using if you're recording video, whether or not you want audio recording if you choose not to. Very powerful tool if you're a trainer, a salesperson, maybe you're a tech, you're wanting to give someone instructions on how to reset their account or mail, or you're helping out mom or dad with something, or you're on YouTube. Screenshot and screen capture, a powerful uh, tool that I use almost on a daily basis on my Mac. So that is tip number one. Let's jump on to tip number two. Now for tip number two, I love this one and it's one that many people don't know about and it's actually how to customize your desktop to be uh, even more productive and it's something called Hot Corner. So I'm gonna switch cameras again and I'm gonna go over to my system settings. That's the little gearbox that you have there um, on your Mac. And on your Mac, if you scroll down to where it says desktop and dock, and then you have many, many options on how to customize your desktop and your dock. But I want you to go all the way to the bottom, bottom right hand corner, and there's something called Hot Corners. Now when you click on Hot Corners, you're gonna get this menu, which basically allow you to select what you want at the four corners of your screen. Um, as you can see in the very bottom left, I have one called the lock screen. I have one on, all the way in the bottom right called quick note. I can click on this little top section. I can select mission control, application window, desktop notification, launch pad, so on and so forth. I'll show you one here, mission control. And then over here, I'll show you application windows. Now, this is gonna be a little tricky because I can't, again, I am recording directly on my Mac and um, I'm using a video switcher, if you will. So I'm capturing the screen. So I can't do functions like lock mic screen because it'll obviously disconnect us from recording. But what Hot Corner, Hot Corners does, it creates a virtual button on the four corners of your screen. This is phenomenal. So as you can tell there, the bottom left-hand corner, I have one lock screen. I use this on all of my Macs, whether I'm here at the home office or I'm at church at my home office. If I'm gonna walk away from my computer um, and maybe I have sensitive information on my screen that I don't want anybody coming and maybe taking a glance at, financial documents, personal records, who knows? I can just grab my mouse and I drag my mouse to that bottom corner 
and instantaneously my lock screen will lock. So I'm gonna show you with quick note. This is one of my favorites. If I drag my mouse all the way to the bottom right, I get this little white icon, I click on it, and all of a sudden I get a quick note action. So I am and instantaneously, I don't have to go look for my notes application, I don't have to kind of like go to my dock and find it. Do I have it as a shortcut? I quickly just drag my mouse to that corner and I get to generate a new note. Pretty, pretty cool. I, I did mission control and applications window. If I drag my mouse all the way to the top left-hand corner now, I get mission uh, control, which basically shows all of my desktops, which that is coming soon. I'll show you what I mean about that. And if I click on my applications all the way in the top uh, right-hand corner, I now get to see all of my applications that are open. You may not be seeing anything on your screen because there's no other apps open, but basically all of my open applications would be displayed so I can quickly switch between application to application. So that's a very powerful tip number two. Did you know about Hot Corners? Go check it out. Let's jump into tip number three. Now here's tip number three, and I'm actually gonna do a little bit something a little bit different because tip number three does require hardware. I am an avid user. I, I love this mouse. I ha I'm using the Logitech Master MX3. Um, I've used this for, for many, many years. It's pretty awesome. It has a switcher in the back that you can select from, from uh, three different um, devices, whether your, your, um, your Mac, your iPad, you can switch between phone, things like that. Um, you can tell, maybe not so much on the camera, but it has a lot of wear and tear. I love this mouse lots of programmable features, but I also use a trackpad and I use both of these simultaneously. So I'm gonna switch video now, I'm gonna switch camera now, and I'm gonna show you how I use it. Now I'm gonna to attempt to do this because I'm actually recording on my iPhone right here, and but I, wanna, I want you to kind of get the whole picture. Um, so what I love about a mouse and trackpad combination is that I can be multitasking. So right here, if you're looking on the iPhone, I'm actually recording today's video. But what I love about using a mouse pad and a trackpad is that I'm either typing using both of my hands on my, on my keyboard or maybe moving the mouse with one, but there are moments where I'm actually, my hands are separated and I will be using my left hand for trackpad and my right hand for mouse. And there's just so many different things. First of all, let's talk about the mouse. So the mouse has many programmable uh, buttons so that I can definitely put, for example, I can back click my, uh, my back button and I can highlight specifically a, a specific area within the screen. Maybe you're seeing that through my iPhone, maybe not necessarily on camera, but I'll try to overlay this. I can actually zoom in to a specific spot by using, again, some of these programmable uh, buttons. Now, I realize that this is a hardware feature within a mouse. So this is one of the tips that I give people is that, you know, whenever you buy a Mac, you're, you maybe you're using just your trackpad on your laptop, but if you actually use a third-party Mac or mouse, you have that much more capability. Now, the reason that I use a trackpad is because there are certain um, Apple features like um, expose uh, or different screens that I can use. Now, on my trackpad, I've actually programmed it so I can do a three-finger swipe and I can actually move all of my screens. Now, at this, you're probably watching through the iPhone, but you can tell that I go from one window to another desktop, completely ex expanding my surface area to work. And what I also love about this, if you're in a very busy, maybe you're multitasking, by doing a simple gesture of just three fingers up, and you can change you can change what that uh, shortcut is, whether three fingers or four fingers. But now I kind of just expands all of my open uh, applications in one shot, so I can very quickly bring that one to the forefront. I can again switch forward and bring that up. Obviously, if I just click on the specific window it will bring it up as well, but sometimes you just wanna get a, a bigger picture. I also see at a glance, all the way at the very top, all the different desktops that I have, and I can also reorganize them by just clicking and dragging them over. So in essence, what this is doing for me, it's allowing me to really extend my Mac computer, especially if you're working on a laptop. You're working on a 13-inch laptop, larger or smaller, and you almost kind of feel constrained because the window is so small, you can use spaces and expose to really 
diversify and stretch out your screen by creating these multiple spaces. And I find it with the trackpad, it makes it that much more easier. Now, let's say you're watching and you're using a laptop. Well, guess what? You already have a trackpad built in into your laptop. Same thing, go to system settings, go to mission control or expose or spaces, and you can quickly extend your desktop. Now, if you're working at a desktop with a keyboard and a traditional mouse, consider getting a trackpad. It will make you that much more productive. That is my tip number three. Let's jump into tip number four. All right, tip number four. Now listen, there is no judgment here. Does your desktop look like this? Does your desktop look like a hot mess? I, I, I I've seen some of your desktops. It, it, listen, we've all been there. It's easy to save onto your desktop. This is very simple, but many people still don't know it. All you gotta do is right click on your desktop and put use stacks. And just like that, everything gets stacked. I mean, come on people. This has been around for several years, yet there are many, many, many messy desktops out there. Let me just explain to you what's going on. So this is actually organizing your clutter um, if only cleaning up the house was that easier, right? Like I'm not talking about um, picking up the kids' toys. So it'll stack like items either by date, by kind, or by what you decide by size. So if you right click on your desktop and use stacks, uh, that is a, a game changer, right? Again, it'll just save you save you from becoming in, insane. But you can also group stacks by kind, the date last open, the date added, date modified date created, tags, you name it. I like to stack them by kind. So that means that all of my PDFs are in my PDF folder or PDF stack. All of my uh, screenshots are all together. So very, very simple. You're looking for a PDF, just click on that PDF. They start to expand. They show up what they where, where, where they're at. And just like that is very, very easy. And that is tip number four. Use the stacks, people. All right, let's keep it moving. Tip number five, man, spotlight, 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 spotlight. This is one that people forget about often. And I use spotlight for everything. Now, what is spotlight? Everybody knows that you have this little magnifying glass all the way up here, all the way up here in the top right-hand corner, right? So if I click on this little magnifying glass, you get a spotlight. That is like the the, the old way of, of, of setting that up. I'm just gonna go ahead and let me move my screen here for a little bit. All you gotta do is hit Command and then Spacebar. So Command, Spacebar, and you got a Spotlight window. Now Spotlight will help you out with everything that you ever could ever need in your entire Mac. You need a picture, you need a folder, you need something. You remember that you had a recipe um, and you can't remember where it's at. Just type the word and it's going to look through your entire Mac at both bookmarks that you have saved. It'll do an internet search on Safari. Um, it'll find you uh, things that maybe you have taken a picture of. Instantaneously, a song, anything that, that you can quickly think of, it can find. Not only can it find stuff like that, it can find things by, by date. So if I put a random date here, it's going to bring up pictures. It's gonna bring up um, uh, calendar, anything that I might have had on that date. Um, it'll also do math equations, right? So I can typically, you know, five divided by 10, right? Uh, it, it'll create simple, simple annotations like that. I can put 200 uh, USD to euros. Um, and it'll actually even tell me right there what the conversion is all within spotlight spotlight is amazing it can go through your entire computer and even do actionable items like math did you know that that's tip number five let's go on to the next one tip number six now tip number six is one that's probably hidden but it's right underneath our noses so here i just opened up my finder window and here are a couple of different files and for example, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one here. It's this thumbnail that I created for my last video that I did about AI browsers. Did you check that one out? It'll save you some money, um, not only by using AI browsers to find the latest coupon codes or discounts, but if you're a student, you get, um, you get one year free of Perplexity's uh, AI browser comments. So you may wanna check that out. But simple, if you right click on 
a file within your Finder, you'll notice that there's an, a button down here that says Quick Actions. Quick Action lets you rotate, lets you do markup if you want to annotate this picture or this PDF. It'll help you create a PDF, convert the image, even remove the background. Now, of course, removing the background is a much more complex feature and it doesn't work amazing in most situations, but it could get you out of a jam. But here we have a picture and maybe I want to do a, a quick uh, PDF into this uh, um, photo so I can hit create PDF. And just like that, it created a PDF for me and gave it to me right here. So I can hit spacebar and I can see that this is now a PDF file. Um, very, very cool. Quick items, quick actions within your finder is my tip number six. Let's go to my last and final tip, tip number seven, but I think I have a bonus one for you. So tip number uh, seven coming right up. Now tip number seven, I want to show you my entire screen here. I think this is a powerful one. And again, I am using a trackpad, but you can also enable this within your mouse. So on my trackpad, all I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe over from the very edge of my trackpad. Uh, now, if you are on a laptop, um, if, if you're on a laptop and you have your trackpad, all I'm doing is I am swiping from the literally from the edge of my trackpad over, right? Same thing if you're on a on a laptop. You just want to get to the edge of your of your right side of your trackpad and just kind of swipe over. And what that's going to do is going to enable. And I'll switch cameras here once again. It this will change. Um, let me change cameras I should say. If I'm swiping over, I now have my widget list here. And believe it or not, people don't know that you can run widgets on your Mac. So all the way at the very bottom it says edit widgets and you can tap on edit widgets and you can go find your favorite widget from uh, the Mac App Store, right? It's all here located for you depending on the applications that you have. And this is phenomenal if you have quick things that you're doing like maybe in HomeKit automation to turn on lights. Maybe you want to keep an eye on some stock or some other different time zones, a different note. But what many people don't know is that you can add a widget not only to the side, but you can add it to your actual desktop. And not only can will this live on your desktop, you can actually move this wherever you want. And as you notice, all of your icons will get out of the way so that you can organize this however you want. So you can actually have widgets that are permanently on your desktop without having to get into this little sidebar widget mode, right? Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. I love customizing and tweaking my desktops like that because not only does it make it more personal, but it makes it much more, uh, makes me much more productive. Hey, so these were my top seven features or tips on how I use my Mac on an everyday basis. And hopefully it made it a little bit easier for you and more productive. If there's one that you did not know, or maybe you know of one that we didn't go over, let me know down below in the comments. I would truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content, if you got value, you know what to do. Give it a quick thumbs up. Share it with your family, with your friends, so that they can also uh, learn more about their Mac. And then last but not least, I want to thank my supporters. We've opened up a Patreon of, uh, of sorts. So we have encouragers and we have uh, channel membership. Uh, available and some of you have joined. Thank you guys so much for that. I will continue to produce content just for you. So let me know what you want to see next. Until next time, see ya.